All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon links and the YouTube membership button are all down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, 62% of the commercial, mind you, is the key word, honeybee population was lost over the past year in the U.S. Again, that is specifically referring to the agricultural or commercial honeybee population. As, you know, that's one that is actually tracked and can be tracked. Wild honeybee population is relatively the same based on observed trends. And also that's not something you could really track accurately anyways, because real life isn't Star Trek. There's no such thing as scanning for life forms. But commercial honeybee farms are obviously managed by personnel and are thus monitored. And when all the bees in said farm are suddenly dead, that is noticed and reported. So we're going to go through what this does and does not mean. Does this mean that Americans and or other people around the world are all about to suddenly starve to death? No, it does not. To start with, the grains, the primary crops that provide the bulk of our calorie supply, most of those do not depend on honeybee pollination or on any insect pollination or on any bird pollination for that matter. In fact, the four most critical ones that we eat the most of, wheat, oats, rice, barley, those are all self-pollinating. The more common ones, rye and maize, or known in common English as corn, are pollinated almost entirely by wind. Only sorghum and canola are pollinated by insects, and while honeybees are one of those insects, there are also obviously thousands of other species that participate in that, along with wind as well. So to start with, there is not any oncoming damage to grain supply. Instead, it's primarily fruits, vegetables, and nuts that are pollinated by insects mostly, and that is where the commercial honeybee industry comes in. The placing of hundreds of honeybee hives next to a set of agricultural fields is a booster. It's basically steroids in the same way that the modern super fertilizers we use from phosphate rock, potash, and nitrogenous compounds are also effectively crop steroids. The use of commercial honeybees does boost the yields that we get from the crops that they pollinate. But before the commercial honeybee industry those crops still existed and we still grew them. And also, once again, this is specifically the commercial honeybee population. Remember that the commercial honeybees, just like any other form, just like any other form of livestock, have gone through a lot of specific breeding and are thus a lot more genetically homogenous than the wild population otherwise would be. So when things happen to the commercial population, it's going to be a lot more devastating than it would be to the wild population. And this particular incident has been likely the cause of a mix of extreme heat waves the past summer and extreme cold snaps this winter, along with, along with the spread of certain mites and parasites among the commercial honeybee colonies. And also, as previously mentioned, the commercial honeybee population is going to be a lot more genetically homogenous. So there's going to be a lot more widespread vulnerability to certain infections of sorts that spread amongst them. So what's the overall end effect that's going to come from this? Well, as we go into this year, you will likely see reduced amounts of uh, certain kinds of fruits and vegetables on store shelves, and or if the store you go into has normal amounts on there, then you're going to inevitably see increased prices for those because to keep their normal shelf size, they would have had to beat out the other buyers for them, but they're not going to disappear and no one's going to suddenly abruptly starve to death. Now, in the absence of half of or even the entire commercial honeybee industry, it would and is going to put a hit on fruits and vegetables and nut production, but they're not going to suddenly cease to exist as A, again, they existed before and we grew them before commercial honeybee keeping existed because remember there are wild honeybees and there are also thousands of other insects and birds and everything 
that also pollinate plants. So is this bad? Yes, obviously. Is this famine? No. Is this one at least, if not two years, of lower fruit and vegetable availability and increased prices? Yes, most definitely. As if nothing else happens to the commercial honeybee industry population, it will still take beekeepers a few years to have their colonies replace those numbers. So bad news, but not anywhere near cataclysmic famine news of any kind. That kind of news, or that kind of upcoming event, in the future of another country, will be the subject of an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that one. But anyway, thank you all for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. There's a link in the description to a Google Drive with all kinds of different graphs and charts and data compilations that are free to look at, free to use anytime. There's a link to my photography Instagram and link in the top and comment to my cat's YouTube channel. May God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.